have finished the Trouble with Peace. So this is book two in the Age of Madness series. Um, I just finished recording the review for it, the spoiler-filled discussion. So that'll be spoilers. Spoiler free? I loved it. I mean, no one's surprised. It was excellent. It was, it didn't, none of the directions that it went in were directions that I anticipated. None of the personal character arcs, none of them did what I thought they'd do, but everything they did made perfect sense because it's Abercrombie and he writes characters more than he writes anything else. But he would characters, humor, action. He writes great books. I was surprised around every corner. I cannot believe so many things. We talk about it. That Actually, that video is already up. Yeah, that video went up before this one. So if you're interested in spoiler chat about the book, that's already alive. You can, I'll link it, I guess. Spoiler free, it was excellent. It was an excellent sequel, and I'm so excited to see how this trilogy wraps. I also read the next Yona of the Dawn, uh, volume nine. So I love the dynamics between our little group. This volume was, oh, I've lost his name. The dragon with the mask, the one with Ao, with the squirrel companion, he's my favorite. The dragon is my favorite, but also Ao is my favorite. I don't know if I'm saying that right, if I'm pronouncing his name right. But anyway, this was his uh, volume. This one was, it, it explored more of his past and his trauma and his eyes and what's what's going on with his eyes. It explored all of that. Um, Yona stepping in front of him and just speaking directly to him in the midst of what was happening was one of my favorite things that I've read so far in the series. This was one of the best volumes of the series so far. It was so good. Oh, man. Um, yeah, he's my favorite dragon, so naturally a, a, a volume that's very focused on him was a win. Was a win. I The second half, the second, the latter part of the volume I didn't care for because, <laughs> because I don't care about like the wider things going, like there's enough going on. There's enough going on. We have Yona, we have her dragons, we have Hawk, we have Yoon, we have Suwon. Suwon. We have enough bodies, so just like, let's zoom out some more and focus on some more people. Like, I just don't need it. I just don't need it. Also, I don't care about the romance in the series. Please don't turn on me, Yona fans, but I don't. Um, this author has a lot of convincing me to do. Uh, I know it's one of those, it's like a, it's the way shoujo is, is that, you know, you could pair the main character with any old one. Like, there's obviously one direction that we're going to go in, but there's chemistry in every which direction. I personally don't care about reading about that because I'm... I, romance is kind of a tough sell for me anyway, so I don't care about, like, all these little... You can headcanon however you want. And also the main ship, I don't care about at all. So please don't hate me, but I... There's some convincing that still needs done, but as far as just the, the like the friendship dynamics between Yona and the dragons, as well as the dragons and each other and Hawk and how much he hates them all, I love all of that. So yeah, I'm still having a good time. Um, I was supposed to have read Guards Guards in this vlog. I told you last week that I got vlog that I got Guards Guards out from the library, and uh, <laughs> what had happened was, technically it was available to me two weeks ago, and but I was reading other stuff, so I got it, and then I just sat on it. So I'm now 33% through, and it's gone. It's been auto-removed. It's been auto-renewed, auto-given back to the library. So unfortunately, I'm back in the queue, I'm back in line, but I didn't prioritize it like I should have done. Did I say guards, guards? I have been saying guards. Men at Arms, it's on the screen. Men at Arms, book two after guards, guards. Um, I've, I've got the ebook from the library, and I, I left it set too long, so I'm 33% through. I love it, it's excellent, it's a wonderful book. But um, I didn't prioritize my books correctly, and now it's gone. So I'm back in the queue, and whenever I get it back, I'll start reading it again. So now I need to kind of shift my reading plans. So we'll see what I read next, I guess. Welcome to the vlog.
of all, and I want every publisher to take this personally, more books like this, please. I, where's the, I almost always read books with the dust jacket on, hardcover books with the dust jacket on, because books underneath, underneath the dust jackets, books feel terrible. That's not that bad. I was, that was a bad example. Usually books feel awful underneath their dust jackets. They're scratchy and yucky. And this one, you can't tell because you're not here in person, is smooth and feels nice. More books like this, please. Actually, I think this is self-published. Either that or it's like a small indie press. To the Moon Publishing. So I think it must be a small indie press. Anyway, Serial Cortex. This is the book that I'm reading right now. Um, so I am 145 pages in, boom. So this is a very, very quick read. Ah, I just hyped the book. Look at that, it's broken. That's probably my fault. I probably did that. Anyway, um, so this, this follows a couple, a couple of characters. Our main character is a scientist and she's been doing these, um, this lab research where she's, this sci-fi, where she has uh, learned how to dream hop? What does she call it? Mind hop? I think she calls it mind hopping. She's able to put the patient to sleep and put the, put the band around their head and then put a band around her head and then they're able to go into, essentially go into the person's mind, but not physically, it's all mental. And ideally, the person who she's working with is compliant and wants her assistance, and so they'll help her enter through the doors, enter through the sections of the mind and the memories and, and stuff, and, uh, and she assists them to overcome fears, like fear of spiders or fear of the dark or whatever. You, you understand what fears are. So she assists them in overcoming their fears uh, by by working with them and helping them to, to, to gain control over their mind and gain control over where their mind goes. Um, so the that's what the scientist does, but the problem is that she and her partner, who he's the one that monitors the computers to make sure that nothing goes wrong, because if you're injured or uh, killed in this thing, then you die for realsies, or, or your, your, your mind is affected if it's just a bad injury. Because what happens to your mind, um, you know, it, it, affect, it affects you physically, even if it doesn't affect your body. So we have somebody on the outside who monitors the feed and there's a brain sequence, there's a, a, a thing that you can imagine to, that he sees that signature and he knows to pull you out. Um, so it is dangerous. There's some danger involved. Anyway, her research is deeply underfunded. They're about to actually get to the point where they've run out of money and they can't continue their research. And uh, she feels like she's on the verge of breakthrough, but it doesn't look like she's going to be able to get that breakthrough. Enter the detectives. There's a string of murders going on and they're pretty sure they know who did it, but they can't convict her. So they ask for our main character's assistance. Hannah. Hannah Lee. So. The, what's happening here is that uh, everybody's desperate and so everybody breaks the rules <laughs> is kind of like our, 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 what everybody's motivation is. So our detectives decide to go against code, they decide to go against procedure to, uh, to figure out, to, to prove that the person that they're convinced did it, did it because they can't get enough good evidence against her and so they want to use this new technology and get a confession out of her through her subconscious. Obviously the person that they think did it is not going to cooperate which makes this mission very very dangerous which means that Hannah, the scientist, initially says no but then they offer her an exorbitant amount of money and she realizes this is the only thing that'll save my research so I guess I'll risk my life and I'll do this thing. So premise you just kind of have to accept that everybody's desperate and everybody's doing what they shouldn't be doing <laughs> but it's fun it's just fun it feels like if you like the kind of sci-fi like Blake Crouch and Andy Ware uh, where it's not like there's science and there's probably merit behind the science but it's not hard science everything doesn't always have to make sense the plot is sometimes convenient 
and you're just okay with it because you're here to have a fast paced fun time. That's the way I view, kind of like popcorn sci-fi is the way I view like Andy Weir and uh, Blake Crouch. Um, like more of, we're all here to have a good time, we're here to laugh, we're ha here to, to just have like a fast paced fun reading experience. That's the way I view this book, at least so far, halfway through. There's a couple of conveniences, there's a couple of things that you kind of have to go, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna roll with it. But it's well written, I felt engrossed in it the moment I started reading, like the very first chapter, I was totally, completely in it. I felt completely immersed and it's been really, really fun. It's a different concept than I typically tend to read, so I'm having a lot of fun reading it. And I'm excited to see what happens with it, so. I'm gonna finish this and then I'll tell you what I thought of it. Cortex ended up being a mystery. So there's a point in the novel where we stop and we ask ourselves, okay, but did she do it? <laughs> this person that we're trying to figure out, or that we're trying to get a confession out of, to get proof that she did it, but did she? And if not her, then who? And then you get to go through the fun process of questioning everyone, reading way too deeply into everything that everybody says and does. And it was fun. Man, I had fun. It's only three, it's under 300 pages, actually. Um, it's under 300 pages. It's a really fast, fun ride. So I really gave you all the information that you need in the last clip of this vlog so i'll just say i had a really good time with it i think that if you if it sounds appealing to have a popcorn sci-fi with a mystery um then do it it's like it would be a weekend read for a lot of people because it's just it's it's a very immersive book it's easy to sink into it and just kind of really want to keep going and uh and it's a lot of fun it's different from anything that i've read before you will figure out the mystery before the protagonist does, but it was still, I mean, it was still fun kind of whittling people down and going, ah, ah, there it is. <laughs> That's the one. That's the clue. Not that there was only one, but, you know, it'll be, it, it's fun to, to get the one that's like, ah, okay, I, I know where we're going now. Um, I also read the next three volumes of Vagabond, which is the next Viz Big bind up. So that's volume seven through 10. Um, and I'm gonna be recording my discussion with Philip on that tomorrow. It'll be up on my channel on Tuesday. The last discussion was on his channel. If you follow those and you missed it on his channel, you should check it out. Um, but I don't know, I'm deep enough into the series now that it feels kind of weird. I feel this way about Yona too. It feels kind of weird to give updates in the vlog because I'm deep enough into the series. Do you want the updates uh, for my manga people? I know some of you book people don't care about the manga updates, but for my manga people, do you want the updates? For the series when they're a bit in? Are these vague updates helpful to you? For Vagabond, I feel like since we're already doing the deeper discussions with Philip week to week, do you need the Vagabond check-ins in the vlog? Let me know what you think if you're a Vagabond reader or a, a Yona reader. How do you like the way I've been doing it? But these last three volumes of Vagabond were great. I loved them. Uh, I'm really enjoying digging into questions and trying to figure out because some of the stuff is so abstract still and uh, trying to just dig into it and and I'm excited to have these discussions with Philip. It's a really introspective, interesting series and I, it's, it's a series that keeps me wondering where are we even going with this, but in a really good way. And the art's gorgeous. The art's constantly gorgeous. But yeah, I'm loving it. I'm having a great time reading them and discussing them with Philip. So that discussion... 
of the next three will be on my channel on Tuesday. So this week I finished the Trouble With piece. The review for that is already up on this channel. It was up last Tuesday. So if you like a spoiler discussion, it's already there. And I read Serial Cortex as well as Yona and the next Viz bind up of Vagabond. Chat with me in the comments about any of these books. If you're gonna check them out, if you've already checked them out and you wanna talk about them with me, I'd love to hear it. I post videos every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel, Monday and Friday on the main channel. I'll see you again soon. Bye.